In this question, we have been told that FEG is a tangent. Okay, so it's a tangent to, can you see that there's two circles in this question? It's a tangent to the big circle and the small circle. Now they tell us that they show by these arrows that those two sides are parallel. And so the first question says, prove that BC is parallel to AD. That's what we've got to prove first. Now remember, whenever they talk about parallel lines, you should always think of the word fun. These are the three letters that should click in your mind as soon as you think of parallel lines. So we're going to have to find one of those to somehow prove that those two lines are parallel. So what we could do first is have a look at this shape over here. And so that would mean that angle E1 is equal to 40 degrees. Can you see the Z or the N? Because those two lines are parallel, we can form a Z over there. And so the reason for that is going to be alternating angles, so alt angles. And the two lines that are parallel will be AD parallel to FG. Then we can see that we have a tangent and a chord. And we have an angle that is trapped in between those two. So remember, if you've watched the video on the tan chord theorem, you would know that to use the tan chord theorem, you need a tangent, a chord, and an angle that is trapped in between them. So are there any other, so what we've got to do is let's rather look at that chord DE and let's see what other angles we could form using DE. So if we start at E and we go along this line, we would get to A. And if we go along D and we go along this line, we would get to A as well. And so we can say that DE forms angle A. And so because of the tan chord theorem, we can say that that angle A is going to be equal to, well, technically, if you say A, it could also mean this angle. So we have to be more specific. So let's rather call it D A E, for example that's going to be equal to 40 degrees as well because of the tan chord theorem. We could also use the tan chord theorem somewhere else because remember that tangent is a tangent to the big circle and the small circle. So have a look at this chord over here. Well, there, so there we've got a tangent and a chord once again and we have an angle that is trapped in between which is the 40 degrees. And so we can look at chord EC now and see what angles it forms. Well, if we go along this line it gets to B and if we go along that line, it also gets to B. So we can say then that angle B1 is also equal to 40 degrees. And the reason for that will be the tan chord theorem. So notice to use the tan chord theorem, you just need a tangent and a chord. It doesn't matter which circle it's, I mean, if that tangent is a tangent to both circles, and the chord is in both circles, then it's absolutely fine. So we've got now that B1 is 40 degrees. And so now have a look at these two lines. We have just proved that these two angles are 40 degrees. And so we can see there's that F kind of shape forming over there. It's a backwards F, but as long as you have parallel, or as long as you can form this kind of shape over here, then we call that corresponding angles. Now, normally they would tell us that the lines are parallel, and then we could say that those two angles are equal. But what we have just proved is that those two angles are equal. See, they're both 40, which means that the two lines are parallel. So we can say that AD is parallel to BC, and the reason for that is converse. Remember, converse means the other way around. Converse of corresponding angles corresponding angles because normally as we've just said normally they would tell you that these lines are parallel and then you would be able to say that those two angles are equal however in this example we first showed that these two angles are equal and so because of that the two lines must be parallel the last question is to work out the angle of H well what I want to do first is look at this triangle over here and we can easily work out angle E2 because we have that the top corner angles are both 40 degrees and we know that all three angles in a triangle should add up to 180. So we can say 180 minus 40 minus 40. Why? Because of the sum of angles in a triangle. And so that means that angle E2 is going to be 100 degrees. Now if you look in this shape over here, we know that that is called a cyclic quadrilateral because it's a four-sided shape that touches the circle in four of its at four of its corners. 
And so we know that H and E2, well, they are opposites of each other. And the opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary, which means that they add up to 180. And so H is going to have a value of 80 degrees due to the fact that they are the opposite angles of a cyclic quad. And then some teachers will add the word supplementary at the end.